So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AMZ's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So it's an amazing time right now. There's some amazing stuff going on. Private space race, uh, health advances going to the next level, and the thing that I've been most interested in lately would be 3D printing. And uh, I figured I'd bring my, my big rig in today. This is a TiVo Tornado, kind of a little more than an entry level unit and uh, able to make some really big stuff. And the reason I've got into this is I see in the next few years, maybe the next five to 10 years, I see 3D printing as a huge part of the auto repair industry. I see in the future coming on the horizon, parts places that normally have to deliver parts having their own machine that they bring to different shops and instead of having to call up and order a part, the part has to be brought to here and, and delivered, you know, manpower and all that it takes. I see in the future we're able to just call up and say we need a part or go onto their website and press a couple of buttons and a part for an auto repair being printed up right here and you just use it. And I definitely see that in the future. So that's why I have spent a lot of my free time teaching myself 3D printing and how to modify the files and how to, how to get a usable part out of the internet using nothing but rolls of plastic and, and, and a little bit of technology to get what you need. Um, normally you just go to a website like Thingiverse and that's what we got up right here and you can order anything that you can think of. Uh, chances are anything that you're gonna wanna make has already been designed by somebody out there. Things like uh, so I got a small sampling of stuff I've been printing over the, the last few weeks. Uh, probably one of my first things and got me really interested. This is a, a snap-on scanner cable and for some reason these tips break. Uh, they're made out of, they must be made out of the same plastic that Audi makes all of their cooling systems out of. So I went on Thingiverse and found a file to have an OD, ODB, yeah, an ODB, an OBD connector repair piece that just needs a little bit of modification and this will repair that pretty cool costs oh Jesus I don't know three cents four cents worth of plastic and I think it took 20 minutes to print uh, other things that are really amazing that you can print is uh, is gear is bearings things like this now this printed on this machine just like that when it was done you popped it off and it spins it actually spins really well as you can see they call that a gear bearing um, printed a lot of those because they're really cool to play with they're really neat and you can't actually take that apart uh, other things you can print are things like organizers or cool sculptures here was one of my early prints a, a t800 um, I actually have two two 3d printers this large one and then I have a smaller called uh, a mono price mini Delta which is something that I was bringing in here to print some small stuff up but I wanted to bring the big one here because we got a real special special project for that I'm going to show you in a second other things uh, things like this this was really cool this printed out on this machine was just like that printed just like that when it was done you popped it off you kind of worked it a little bit and right out of the box right off the printing bed without any modifications whatsoever was a working functional cool little lift not that it's really good for a whole lot other than practice and seeing if you could print things that work but every piece of that the screw in the middle all these all these pivots all this little slide bars up top here all of that printed in place at the same time and came out a working thing uh, other things you know a uh, wood uh, I have actually wood filament this is 30% wood 70% plastic and I made a little screw container holds perfect threads to to hold screws nuts or uh, or anything like that what have you and uh, the threads actually work really well it's just kind of hard to do while holding a camera uh, a lot of these if you ever get into 3d printing you're gonna print a lot of those this is called the benchy boat this is a benchmark test boat whenever you set up a new printer or you change settings or something you or plastic or material you'll print something like that to to make sure you can do the overhangs and the circles and the different shapes and all that uh, this is actually they consider this a torture test for a 3d printer really cool uh, i mean you, it doesn't end there i mean you can print decorative items here's a vase i printed the other night i actually put this on with some rainbow filament and uh, i went to bed when i woke up the next morning this was sitting there now this machine is pretty big for what it is and i could have made this almost twice the size but you know that's a lot of plastic and i'm still kind of figuring out how to do this but man what a what a pretty thing huh 
But anyways, more along the lines of what we do in the automotive industry. Now, stuff that really intrigues me with this are small things like uh, push pins. How many people, how many times have you worked on like inner fender liners or a front bumper of a car and you've got to take those little push pins out? Oh, these little guys right here, things like this. Oh, people hate these. I've seen the memes. You guys have seen the memes where it's God and Satan. Satan's like, come on, God, let me design one thing. He's like, okay, here you go. So what do you do if you got to take that apart? You got to go try to go to a, a hardware store or a parts place that maybe has a selection or an assortment. And you can see here at the shop, I do a lot of body work. So I have a pretty big assortment. We actually have like three more of these containers with all these different things that we have to stock. And and although they aren't expensive one by one, but when you got to buy, you know, a hundred of them, and they're all different sizes, all different applications. Now, what if you could just go online and boom, there they are. And there are a bunch of files. Pretty much everyone you're likely to have here is right there. Now, you can get a 3D printer like this. This 3D printer was like, I think I paid like like 300 bucks and change or something. And I, I did the expedited shipping because, you know, I wanted to play with it right away. But this was, you know, call it 400 bucks for this unit. You can do some pretty large stuff. The other printer, the, the Monoprice uh, Mini Delta, which uh, maybe I'll put a picture in if I remember. It was uh, I think I paid $150 off of Amazon for it. I wanted the cheapest printer that was portable I could find. And that little thing is great for doing stuff like this. So, so say for under under 150 call it with materials call it under 175 dollars you can be printing all of this stuff you know you don't have to stock it you don't have to worry about having it you can start a job saying oh i'm going to need so many connectors so many clips and print out the file and there you go you know ready to ready to rock and roll so more on to what we got going on today now what i've got noticing you know every one of these lifts these lift pads right here they just don't really last. They really don't. You get some uh, some chemicals, some you know cleaners on them, which is inevitable. They degrade really fast. Uh, probably get maybe a year out of those, and they aren't really the cheapest thing. Here's probably the worst one I have on my lift. And every one of these lifts has pads that are wearing out. And what I found really interesting, I went on that same Thingiverse and found that. How interesting is that? Lift pads. And I went down, you can read the comments, what people say about it, and they seem to be lasting really well, except these ones were kind of thin. So what you do is you go download all files, and you end up with what is called an STL file. That's what this is here, and we need to change that into a G code. So uh, now I'm using uh, Repetier with Slicer, anybody that's into this on this computer, but I don't actually use this program. I just have it on this computer. I, and it works to give you guys an idea of what you would go through to make a file. You would get it on there. This, uh, like I said, this is to my smaller printer. That's why this doesn't quite fit on there. But you would, you know, make adjustments. You can make them thicker or bigger or smaller. And then you would go to your slicer, and, and it's called the slicer, which, which is information in the computer that knows the size of whatever printer you're using and how to make the head do what it is. It does and lay it out. I'm not going to actually bother slicing this. It takes a little bit and it's not going to fit anyways. But you would do that and there's a file. You save that file to a memory card. Stick it in your machine. You know, clean your bed, level your bed, do whatever your machine needs to do. And uh, yeah, we're going to actually right now, let me set up a time lapse. There we go. And we're actually going to print all of the automotive lift pads that we need here in the shop. Now the bed gets hot on these to hold the pad. The, the temperature I guess is changeable up here depending on what kind of plastic or how you're printing. What I'm using now, a lot of people will print with something called polylactic acid, a PLA plastic in the beginning, which is a great easy to print material. Uh, reasonably durable, but here today we are printing with clear PET-G. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the PET, uh, the, what the name of that, but you guys get the idea to print up. Now I did a test print. I've actually, honestly, <laughs> I've probably done like 10 test prints to get this to come out. And I ended up with a very usable lift pad. How cool is that? Now uh, I had to tweak the settings a bit. I can get that to print. And here's the caveat about 3D printers. They can take a little while to print stuff. 
Now, when I said I, I set this print up on this vase and went to bed, I meant it. This took about six hours to print out. Uh, these lift pads, I've got the settings kind of not where you would expect them to be on a 3D printer to put out a lot of material. And I've got these down to about two hours each to make, but that's the thing. Once, they, once the machine gets started, it's not like you have to babysit it. It's not like you have to sit there and tell it what to do. You press print and pretty much make sure the first layer comes out fine, walk away, and whatever time it takes to make it, when you get back, it's, it's ready to rock and roll. All right, while that's warming up and preheating, I wanna show you some other things that are really interesting I saw on here was the push pins. Uh, things like here, a 72 Volkswagen Beetle door handle gaskets uh, I can print out stuff like that which I think is really cool the gaskets you can print out now inside door panels where all the rods come together these things here can be a real pain in the butt when you break one uh, these are kind of hard to stock because they're not really needed a lot but to be able to print one of these out if you break it on a repair that means a customer getting their car back when they you know plan to get it back or two days from now when I had to order that part you can print that up and there's pretty much everyone you're going to want out there uh, door handles themselves the actual inner door handles you can print those up there are outer door handles all the stuff that that can be hard to get and can be the difference between a happy customer or an angry customer you can just print it out while you're doing the job uh, what else we got on here yeah I think that's that's pretty much all I had set up to show you you know show and tell style but yeah there's there's a uh, Thingiverse, there's My Mini Factory, there's tons of uh, websites that already have products designed to print. Ton of fun. Oh, here we go. Clean the little snot off. This is one thing I've learned. If you're going to do 3D printing, can't pick it up. You're going to have a lot of stuff like this. A lot of little pieces of filament lying around. So what the machine's going to do first is it's going to home itself so it knows where the stepper motors are in relation to the bed. And hopefully if I did all my homework and math and, and set up correctly, this is going to print out. And there it is. You see the little line of clear plastic? And it's just going to keep, uh, it's just going to keep spreading that out and spreading that out one layer at a time. I'm actually going to make a quick adjustment to it here. We're a little too tight on the right. Oops, bumped it a little, but that's okay. this printer all day I think we did what three I had the time lapse going I believe we got three of these printed out all day they take they take a uh, two hours and 
you can see it, two hours and 13 minutes to do each one of these with the way I have them set up. But in the end, we end up with a nice, uh, a nicely 3D printed lift pad. Uh, well, maybe. Well, anyway, you get the point, you get the idea, you know, printed there, there it is. So let that cool down, that'll pop off. Now, I printed a few of these out at home because I wanted enough to be able to put them on the lift and try them out for the day. And there they are. This has had all day. If you guys watch the time lapse, every car was put up and down with these lift pads. And they look none the worse for wear. Nice recesses, the, uh, the recesses so you don't need special carriage bolts. You can just use regular hardware with these, which is a detail I really like. Usually you need special flat topped bolts to put in these things to hold them down but uh just able to use regular nuts and bolts and and washers and such to hold them on so replacement's easy enough and yeah hopefully these things are going to last a long time and if they don't if i need to print another one up well another one's just two hours two hours away the spool we used quite a bit of that today that was not necessarily a full spool but we probably ran through a solid 180 millimeters of filament doing these doing these and then i did the four down there so i maybe be able to get one more out of that or enough of one more to to, to pass for uh for a lift plate so anyways yeah guys 3d printers that's definitely the way of the future there's going to be a lot more in the automotive industry that's going to rely on this piece of equipment uh from here you know i see like i was saying earlier i don't know if i mentioned in the next 10 years or so maybe a little more maybe a little less i see all the parts companies that we order our parts from is just sending us a machine like this and we just print out parts on demand instead of having to warehouse parts having to ship parts uh, different areas when needed having to to deliver the parts from the warehouses to the garages who need them i see that this is going to be a big part of this so anyways guys it's the end of the day it's five o'clock i want to get on with my day thanks for watching uh comments down below if you guys have any cool ideas for a 3d printer i'd like to hear if you have any cool files just leave them down in the comments i'd love to read it anyways guys thanks for watching on that note and until next time keep it out of the cabbage